Hi everyone, Paul Elam here with my third and final installment of the series titled, How to Get Laid. As most of you watching this have already figured out, this series of talks is about much more than just getting laid. And of course, that is as it should be. Just talking about getting laid with no mind for anything else is like talking about hunting in the wilderness without taking gun safety and survival skills into consideration. You can do it, but that doesn't make it a good idea. With that in mind, I'm going to close this series by responding to some of the criticisms from the comments and elsewhere. That fits in nicely with how I want to wrap this up. One nit I got was that what young men really needed was just information on how to score. The idea being that most of them live in a state of sexual deprivation that results in psychic trauma. While this is ostensibly true, it is also sadly myopic. And it highlights another problem I've seen repeatedly in the teachings of PUA gurus. Sex does not happen in a vacuum. Indeed, I can't think of any other activity, especially for a young man, that is so pervasive in its impact. Its effects far outreach mere sexual release and goes past self-image and psychological health. It can have social, legal, financial, emotional, and even academic effects. Are we really to be so obtuse that we will reduce young men and everything in their lives to base biology? Let me be more direct with that. If I want to hear someone regard young men as though the only thing that really matters to them are their dicks, I'll go join now and start donating to Anita Sarkeesian. I will be happy to point out to anyone that if you peel back a young man's skin, you don't find wires and gears, you find flesh and blood. And if you peer into their psyches, you will find that they feel just as deeply and passionately as any woman. They hurt, grieve, love, and suffer broken hearts just like most other human beings, and much of that emotional experience is inextricably woven into their relationships with women. Offering them a slap on the back and a here's what you do to get laid is the cheap cop-out of the great fatherless society. It is Cosmo for lounge lizards, stylized wisdom imparted by the apathetic and the uninvolved. I've spent many years counseling predominantly younger men. I never spoke to any one of those young men who had a single problem that would be resolved by a pump and dump but I spoke with many whose problems were rooted in their relationships with women. To clarify this further, I placed a link in the low bar to an article I wrote some years back titled, How We Kill Johnny. It is a true story about a young man whose gynocentrism and obsequiousness with women resulted in a murder-suicide. Perhaps reading it may help my critics forgive me for seeing the young men's sexual needs as something more than ejaculating inside a vagina. That is why I profess to anyone who cares to listen that a values-based approach to women and indeed to life is the most essential skill we can help young men develop. It won't be had with cheesy pickup lines and pseudoscientific evo-psych swill, and it certainly won't be delivered by pussy messiahs with a book to sell. Another problem that was insinuated in the comments was that young men would not listen to any of this, both because of the generational difference and because this generation of young men is largely fatherless and brainwashed by women. There is a lot of truth in that concern. Today's young men have been betrayed by the generation of their fathers. That is actually two generations at this point. Young men have been stabbed in the back by a cowardly class of male Brutuses. I am not talking about deadbeat dads who are actually dead broke, alienated and forcibly locked out of the lives of their sons. I'm talking about all the men who to this day stand by and watch what is happening to our young men, too chicken shit to say anything about it or to take a stand. Or worse, those men who take pleasure in telling young men to man up when they should be telling them to fight back as they take a place on the battlefield beside them. Yep, that's the generational thing in me talking, so sue me. 
it is still what is needed. I don't want to go on a rant here, but these men have not only cleared the way for feminist hate mongers to overtake most aspects of Western society, they have created the void that is now filled with vultures selling the snake oil of gynocentrism in the form of so-called pickup artistry, among other things. That too is a problem that can only be solved by men with values, one of them being that they owe younger men more than cop-outs and platitudes about pussy. I don't imagine that what I have to say is going to rock anyone's world. Hell, I'll be lucky if this series gets seen 10,000 times over the next year. But until YouTube pulls the plug on everyone who cares about our young men, I will leave it here with the message that I'm trying to express. And that message is this. If you want to get laid, get fulfillment, and even get love, all of it can start with your values. Principled, direct men who excel at their own ambitions, who are not naive or pushovers, invariably earn the respect of other men. Men who are respected by other men are attractive to women because that respect is a form of power. Men who live by their values, instead of pretending to live by their values, also develop the metal to endure loss, grieve in a healthy way, and maintain their own self-respect in the process. That happens to be another trait that women admire. It is not a game. It is not a technique. It's not a con. It is not a fraud. It is just the opposite of all those things. It is you choosing what you value and believe, then making the decision to live by it, damn the world around you, and damn any man or woman who does not like it. Will that reduce your chances with some women? Sure. Skeezers, borderlines, opportunists, habitual victims, the vast majority of all feminists, all the women most likely to screw you except not in a good way. If you feel like that's a loss, then you might want to check your values again and start over. For those of you out there fortunate enough to have had a good father present in your lives, this is likely very similar to what he taught you. Value yourself and you will learn to value others without the burden of suffering fools or the willingness to tolerate snakes of either sex. Both Roosh and one commenter called my advice here fatherly. I tend to see it more as just sensible. But if I did have to say anything fatherly, it would be this. If anyone tells you that love is impossible, that all women are evil, then know you're only hearing the frustrations of other men betrayed by a system increasingly stacked against them. Understand their pain, but don't believe them. They will only lead you into the same hole of bitterness in which they now dwell. There was never in human history such a thing as love without risk. In today's world, there is more risk than ever. If you are smart, and if you had a set of values that navigate your decisions about who you will and won't allow in your life, your chances are all the better for it. That concludes this series on how to get laid. I hope you've enjoyed, even if you haven't, and we'll see you next time.